The first op amp circuit that we're going to take a close look at is the non-inverting amplifier. So um, the orientation is going to probably be like this. Um, remember we have the inverting input and the non-inverting input. So if we apply an input voltage to the non-inverting input, then whatever the sign of this voltage coming in here will be the same sign as what comes out here. So um, suppose we have an input resistor here, I'll call this R1, and then remember that we said earlier that almost all of the op-amp circuits are going to have a negative feedback loop. And if we have a negative feedback loop, then we're no longer going to use the open loop gain, now we're going to use the definition of the closed loop gain when we're calculating the gain of the circuit. Um, so let me finish this up. This is the feedback loop, so this is the feedback resistor here. And then I'm going to just have this bottom line here be our ground wire. So I'm going to use this little ground symbol here. And then these terminals here, this is where we're going to measure our output of the amplifier. So <clears throat> in uh, you may or may not see in this schematic um, the plus and minus BCC to turn the op amp on, but if you do, it'll be right there. So here we have the input resistor. Now this is external to the op amp, so it's different than that R in that we talked about where there is a resistor between these two input terminals. Um, it is external to the op amp. And then we have this feedback resistor that's on this negative feedback loop. So we get to use the ideal op amp approximations. And those are that VA is equal to VB where um, I'm going to call this my input A and I'm going to call this my input B. So that means that the voltage at input A is equal to the voltage at input B. And then the next approximation that we get to use is that the current coming into input A is equal to the current coming into input B and it's equal to zero. So the current that's coming in to this input A is zero and the current coming in here to input B is zero. So I'll label this as IB equals zero and IA is equal to zero. Okay, great. So I'm going to call this V source. Sometimes it'll be called V in, um, whatever. So the, um, like I said, since we have a negative feedback loop here, the gain of this amplifier is going to be um, a linear ratio between V out and V in. So here we have that we've got a current that comes in this direction to this node VA and then some of it that's going to come up and take the path through the feedback loop. So I'll label this IA and I'll label this IF and then we also have a current that sort of originates from this source but we're making a, an approximation that these currents are so small that they're basically negligible. So we're going to consider this IB to be equal to zero. Okay, great. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to use node voltages um, to solve this circuit. So first of all, at node VA, we have um, by KCL that I1 is equal to IA plus IF. But by these ideal op amp approximations, we get to say that this IA is actually equal to zero because no current is going to take the path that splits this way. So all the current from I1 is going to come up and take the path IF up and around the feedback resistor. Okay, great. So once we have our KCL equation that I1 is equal to IF, now we can actually replace these currents with um, in terms of V and R. So this current I1 is going to be the voltage between this node and that node divided by the resistor between. So this is ground, therefore that voltage will be zero. Zero minus VA over the resistor between, which is R1, and that's going to be equal to IF. The equation for IF is VA minus V out divided by the resistor between. So this is VA minus V out over RF. Okay, great. And then um, let's look at, we have 
this input voltage that's connected directly to VB. So we know that um, by our ideal op amp approximation that VA is equal to VB and we have that VB is equal to V source so this implies that VA is also equal to V source or VN um, whatever it might be labeled. So I can actually replace all the VAs in my equation here with V source and this is going to be useful for um, coming up with an equation for V out in terms of V in, which we've labeled V source here. Okay, cool. So this is going to be negative Vs over R1 is equal to Vs minus V out over Rf. Okay, so let's come up with um, an expression for V out in terms of our input voltage here. So I'm going to divide this Rf to the other side. This is going to be negative Vs times Rf over R1. I went ahead and put the resistance values together, so I just multiply this over here, and that's equal to Vs minus V out. So this means that V out is equal to Vs plus Vs times Rf over R1. Um, let's write it like this, 1 plus Rf over R1 this is my V out. Okay, so um, if this is my input voltage and this is my output voltage, then what is this? So this is the constant that's getting multiplied by the input to give me my output. This is an amplifier circuit, so that means this thing here is the constant that's amplifying this input circuit. So in other words, this is actually our gain. Um, so that means that as engineers we get to determine what's the gain that we're looking for depending on what resistors we pick here because the gain is going to be um, the feedback resistor divided by R1 plus just a constant of 1. Okay great so let me show you an example of how we might use this relationship for um, if we are asked to design a circuit that has a specific gain. So here's an example problem. So suppose we have the same circuit as above here and let's say that in this particular circuit um, we are asked to um, <clears throat> find um, a circuit that amplifies the input voltage by 4. So in other words we want the gain to be 4 and um, and we don't want to change the sign. So we know if we're not changing the sign of our input voltage, this is going to be a non-inverting amplifier. So we want our input voltage to be coming into this non-inverting input here. And um, let's say that they also ask us to state um, the appropriate range for V in that will cause this to um, stay in the linear region. So we want to avoid saturation. Um, remember when we did the video on um, the linear and saturation regions that um, this op amp circuit will be saturated whenever we have this voltage difference as kind of um, exceeding our VCC, so our V out will be capped in those saturation regions. So in order to keep it into the linear region, what do we have to limit our V in to? Okay, cool. So. Um, Let's say that we're given that our VCC is plus or minus 15 volts to turn on the op amp. Okay, so we're going to need this to, in, to determine um, how much our V out is getting capped, right, to stay in our linear region. We just found in this particular orientation of the circuit that V out is given by whatever our input voltage is times 1 plus the feedback resistor divided by this input resistor R1. And um, if we were to divide both sides of this equation by V in, then we have V out is equal to V in, and this is the definition of gain. So our gain is equal to 1 plus RF over R1, and we want this to be equal to 4. Um, okay, great. So that means that Rf over R1 is equal to 3, 
we have to design a circuit that makes this true. So in other words, we get to pick the values of the resistors to such that the ratio between the feedback resistor and R1, the input resistor, is 3. So we can pick, say for example, we can let RF be 3K ohms, and we can let R1 be 1K ohms, and this would satisfy the constraint of um, a gain of 4. Okay, great. So then the next thing that we have to make sure that we um, that's all set up in our circuit is that we're going to stay in the linear region. So um, in order to stay in the linear region, we need to make sure that our V out is less than or equal to, so the absolute value of V out has to be less than or equal to VCC, right? Because this is our power supply voltage. So the output voltage that's produced by the amplification can't exceed the voltage required to turn on the op amp. All right, so this means that since our VCC is plus or minus 15 volts, that negative 15 is less than or equal to V out is less than or equal to positive 15. So this is the requirement that we need in order to stay in the linear region. Otherwise, our output will be saturated and capped. And it's basically like an incorrect amplification because instead of like if you have an input of three and you have a gain of four, um, then that's going to be that's going to be less than 15 will be good, but if we have an input of 5 and a gain of 4, that's going to be 20. So it's actually just going to get capped at 15. So you'll think that um, your amplification gain was actually um, 3 times 5, which would be incorrect. Okay, so what do we do with this? Well, we know that V out is gain times V in, right? And our gain for this circuit is 4. So 4 times V in has to meet these requirements, right? So that means that if I divide everything by 4, I need to make sure that negative 3.75 volts less than or equal to V in less than or equal to positive 3.75 volts. In other words, when I'm creating my amplification circuit, this here, this input voltage that I connect here, that I'm amplifying um, by 4, it can't be larger than 3.75 volts, and it can't be smaller than negative 3.75 volts. Otherwise, um, my output gets capped, and I basically lose information. So um, let me know if you have questions about the non-inverting op-amp circuit, and the next video we'll do the inverting op-amp circuit.